Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by New Stabet, America's leading spray deodorant. Now with its anti-immunity factor. Poof, there goes perspiration. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, our publisher panelist, author and columnist, Bennett Cerf. Thank you. <laughs> you know, tonight is the opening of the New York Summer Festival. And I don't think this city offers a brighter, gayer, or more beautiful sight than the young lady on my right, Miss Arlene <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> Thank you, Bennett. That's very sweet indeed. And on my right, one of uh, television's most admired and charming young humorists, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on my right, uh, the lovely lady who has just returned from a very happy about two and a half weeks, wasn't it, Dorothy? Mm -hmm. Two and a half week trip in Europe, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, across the stage, our devastating and delightful moderator, <laughs> Mr. John Daly. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We're up to our usual tricks of a Sunday evening. Once again, we've got some very nice people with some very interesting occupations who've come to pay us a brief visit. We trust that the occupation will be so interesting that their visit right here beside me will be somewhat longer than the panel expects it to be. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later, but now it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job has to be spotted. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Mildred Alkire, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Alkan, where are you from? San Diego, California. San Diego, California. That's a lovely country. Got yes. a very good friend down in San Diego, California. Paul White. Do you know Paul White? No. Huh? Great newsman. Used to all be right, here. John. All right, all right. I got John. lots of friends. That's it, John. Got four That's friends it. over there, actually. <laughs> They're your friends, too. They look a little bit rough, but go on over and let them look at you, will you? Live in La Jolla. Hello, Mrs. Alkan. Hello. All right, Mrs. Elkire, if you'll come over here now and sit down next to me, I think you may know that uh, we start proceedings here by giving the panel one free guess as to what your line may be. And we always begin those free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's a dancing teacher. A dancing teacher, Mr. Allen. She has a little wishbone on her chest. I think she uh, raises chickens. Miss <laughs> <Ms>. Francis. <laughs> I think she has a little restaurant for the Navy down in San Diego. Mr. Seth. She looks like an outdoor lady to me. I, I think she trains animals or something like that. Sort. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have another look at Mrs. Alkire. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. All right. Mrs. Alkire, you know how we do this? The scoring device here, which I flip around. All righty, then, uh, if you're all set to go, I will just tell the panel that Mrs. Alkire is self employed, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. She's at a rest. <laughs> uh, do you deal with both men and women? Yes. Uh, impartially? Yes. Uh, do you perform services? Yes. And does what you do make people happier or better off? Yes. <laughs> Is there any product involved in what you do? Yes. Is it useful? Yes. Would it ever be found in the home? Yes. <laughs> Would it ever be found anywhere but in the home? Yes. Is it um, smaller than a baby carriage? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Is it bigger than a bird bath? <laughs> no. no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Is it just slightly smaller? You, we are getting into comparative terms here that might lead us out of sheer prejudice in the issue to give you a misleading answer. <laughs> you want to try that again? <laughs> Is this uh, mineral in any of its uh, makeup as distinguished from animal and vegetable? Yes. Could that, mittle, uh, <laughs> mittle, could that mineral be metal? 
<laughs> that yeah. metal, the mineral? Or? Do. No. There's two down and eight to go, Miss Fancy. Does that mineral flow? <clears throat> Is it liquid? Liquid? No. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Seth. So Mrs. Alkai, could this uh, be some kind of jewelry or some stone, some precious stone? No. That's no. four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. It's not metal and it's not precious stone. I think I need a conference. I'm not very... You may have 15 sort of seconds for a conference. Uh, what, uh, what is solid and it isn't metal and it isn't... It isn't metal? metal? I thought it was. Well, it's no, it's not. not. No, it's not metal and it's not a precious stone. Maybe or jewelry. It's money. <laughs> is it solid then? Well, it, is it solid? It's yes. solid and small. Yes. Relatively. Uh, could it ever be worn in any form? <laughs> no. No, I just couldn't tell you. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Is it used chiefly by human beings, not in conjunction with any animal? Yes. Uh, does it benefit the person? I mean, the, the physical being? Ah, the physical being. Sense of uh, restoring health, etc., and so forth would make it six no. down and four to go, Miss Fancy. Would it be part of what goes into a house, part of the decor in any way? Yes. Is it, uh, would it be considered a piece of furniture? No. When it's formed, no. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Well, is it visible when visitors come to call at the house? Yes. It can be, yes. It can be. And it's very small. Well, no, we're not, no, don't, uh, we put words in our mouths. We didn't bath. say very small, <laughs> we said it's smaller than a bird bath. Does it come in various <laughs> shapes and colors? Yes. It does. Small conference. Mrs. Alkire wants to be very generous because there are instances where this product may change uh, in form and color. And yet, it is not our intention to in any way mislead you. We will give you an affirmative reply to the question which you posed. At the same time, hope that you will not, in weighing it in the balance with the other questioning, oh. uh, come to an incorrect solution. Have you, have you finished with your filibuster? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, would this be found more likely than not on the first floor of a two-floor house? Yes. Yeah. It would. <clears throat> Do you think you might find it in the kitchen? Yes. Good. Mine. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be uh, used in any way in the preparation of meals? <laughs> yes, might be. But am I correct in assuming that it would not be eaten? That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, might it be put on the table when people? <laughs> Well, he does. No, he does. It's too bad, isn't it? Well, that's it. <laughs> Two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Alcar, would you mind telling me how big or showing me how big you think a bird bath is? You were thinking of a, of a hummingbird. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking of the kind of little canaries bathing. Oh. You know, weensy ones. That's oh. a canary bath. <laughs> well, then. Uh, does, this, does this product have any moving parts? No. no. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Allen. Would it be used to prepare a meal? To prepare a meal? No. All right, thank you. <laughs> Not, I think, the way you ask the question, Steve. It has something to do sometimes with the cooking of a meal because the product is a brick and Mrs. Alkire is a brick layer. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Alkire, you win the full prize and I thank you for being a very interesting guest in What's My Line. Thanks for joining us. It's nice to have seen you. panel, let's see what you can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Leon C. Otis. Is that right, sir? Uh, where are you from, Mr. Otis? Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Yes, sir. Well, you're practically a neighbor, and you have some neighbors and friends here, so your courage should be high high enough to walk over there and let the panel get uh, a closer look at you, will you? Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Otis. Hello, Mr. Otis. Yeah, Francis. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Otis. Hello. 
Alan. All right, Mr. Otis, over here now, if you will, next to me. And at this point, the panel gets its free guess as to what your line may be based on your appearance, handshake they've had, your voice, etc. And we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. Prize fight manager. A prize fight manager, Mr. Allen. I think maybe he's the fellow that sneaked that cane mutiny plug into the uh, Army McCarthy hearings. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think Mr. Otis makes elevators. Mr. Seth. I think he has something to do with the Ladies' Home Journal. No, no soap. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Leon C. Otis at the same time. We will let them know what he's flying in. But the panel will have to dig, and Mr. Otis, are you familiar with the scoring procedure? Oh, yeah. Fine. Mr. Otis is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. Is there a product connected with your work, sir? There is, yes. Is it the kind of thing that might be used by both sexes? Yes. <laughs> Trouble already, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, could it be used uh, or ever found uh, inside the house? Yes. Might it also be found outside the house? Yes. Mm, outside the house. Is it uh, perhaps more often found outside? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would say this in its application, you'd be more likely to find it outside. Uh huh. Used by both sexes outside the house. Could this be worn? Yes. In this kind of weather? Thank you, pardon? In this kind of weather, this warm yes. weather? Yes. Uh, does this cover a... Uh, well, let me put it this way. When this is worn, does it leave a rather large portion of the anatomy exposed? Yes. <laughs> Might you uh, find one of these things at the beach? Yes. Would I be correct in guessing that uh, Dorothy and Arlene would look better in theirs than I do in mine? <laughs> I didn't hear the question. <laughs> the question is, would he be, cor be correct in assuming that Dorothy and Arlene would do better in theirs than he would do in his? That goes for everything, John. <laughs> <laughs> look, look better, I, I said. Well, I think I, not. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. If you mean look better, I would say, and I think Mr. Otis might agree, that... Um, Dorothy and Arlene would look better in theirs than you'd look in yours, yeah. You know. <laughs> That's a sneaky laugh. <laughs> Is this by chance something that a human being would not ordinarily wear at all, or at least Dorothy and Arlene would not, or... Yes. Arbuthnot or something? Wish I'd shut up after the first question. There. <laughs> well, I got two answers. Uh, just something a woman would never wear, let me put it that way. Yes. Would a human being never wear it? Would you repeat that, please? No. <laughs> John, would you have that red back, please? <laughs> would a human being never wear one of these, ordinarily? A human being would never wear one. Good. Uh, and a large portion of the anatomy is exposed. Is it a four-legged animal that uh, is connected with this thing? Yes. Hmm. Domestic? Yes. Animal that usually is found inside the house? <laughs> yes. Well, I can't get rid of this no matter what happens. <laughs> I never did 20 minutes on one program. <laughs> Is it a uh, feline? No. One down there and nine go. to go, Miss Francis. Is it a dog line? <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is some sort of apparel for a dog that a dog would wear, is that correct? It is something that a dog would wear, yes. yes. Uh, would it uh, touch the dog's neck? Yes. Uh, would it touch any part of the dog's face? Yes. <clears throat> and I think it's very rude if you think Dorothy and I would look better <laughs> in what I am thinking of. <laughs> I, I must say, Miss Arlene, the presumption is that you look better to begin with. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of a muzzle. Does it have anything to do with a muzzle? Yes. Yes, that's what it is. Michael? What does Mr. Otis have to do with a muzzle? What? What does Mr. Otis have to do with a muzzle? Well, he certainly doesn't try them on for size, that I'm sure of. <laughs> I think perhaps he makes muzzles. He is a manufacturer of muzzles. That's right. Not muzzles. Very good. 
<laughs> May I say that I operate the leather craft company? I was hoping that my prize might be larger oh, because well. I want to give it to the Boys Work Fund of the Optimist Club of West Philadelphia. What? Look how it grew. See? It's oh. gone. <laughs> And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends in the panel have blindfolds for this particular operation. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. They Good. Are. Would you come out, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the instance of our mystery celebrity, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Arlene Francis. Uh, I presume from the applause that you're part of the entertainment industry? <laughs> <laughs> On a very high scale, too. Are you in pictures? <laughs> Have you made a picture recently? <laughs> Pretty. Uh, <laughs> Have you made many pictures? You haven't made many? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah that, that's yes. Uh, I don't know a man that could get up that high. That's a yes in a descending fifth. Uh, <laughs> uh, may I uh, guess that you are a lady? Are you feminine? Are you feminine? Mm, <laughs> boy, is he feminine. <laughs> uh, have you made a picture that may be released soon? Mean yes or no? I don't know. Was that yes? I think we'll give you a no on that one. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Would you try to make your yeses and your noes sound a little bit different? <laughs> uh, have you ever appeared on the Broadway stage? That's a no that sounds different. That I understood. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Gilgallan. Uh, do you do anything besides act? I mean, do you sing or dance or play a musical instrument? Do you Bob sing? <laughs> Have you ever made any records? <laughs> uh, have you had a picture that was out recently? If you haven't got one that's going to be out soon. Uh, might you be described as a glamour girl rather than a terribly serious actress? Uh-huh. <laughs> Are you brunette? That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. I think I was heading the same direction you were there, Dorothy. Well, oh, get dear. off it. <laughs> <laughs> then you must be either a blonde or a redhead, because plaid is out this year, you know. <laughs> Are you a blonde or a redhead? Are you a blonde? Blue eyes? <laughs> What are you doing after the show? <laughs> Get in line, boy. <laughs> Forgive me, let me see. Uh, are you married? Hmm. Well, that settles after the show, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now. Have you ever danced? Is your husband in show business? Lady in the audience said no. I don't know about you. We give you a yes on that, Steve. I see. I gather by that that he's connected with it, but is not a performer. Is that true? <laughs> oh, boy. Have you ever worked in television? That makes mm. it four down and six to go, Miss Francis. I want to remember, did Dorothy discover whether uh, our guest uh, is a singer or a dancer? Did you? She, she sings. She sings. I'm sorry. Makes records. You sing, and you're blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and she likes it that way. We may be killing a career off here if you don't get it pretty soon. <laughs> um, are you very young? Are you very new in the theatrical world? What? Give us a comparative uh, uh, work. Well, uh, in the ingenue stage of theatrical world. You know, uh, even younger than Jean Crane. 
<laughs> I would say no, that I'm... you're, I think that what you're getting at, uh, we could answer this, that you're in the proper area, perhaps, yes. I'm in the proper area. Mm, very nice it is, too. Uh, I'm going to have to pass to Bennett. I really can't think of this singer and dancer. Mr. Sir. Well, have you ever made any pictures for MGM? That's no. five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, have you ever entertained the troops in any foreign encampment? Six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Have the troops ever entertained you in any area? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Um, have you ever worked with Bob Hope? I'm just going to take a stab in the dark, because it's getting darker all the time here. <laughs> Are you a Marilyn Maxwell? <laughs> Good night, everybody. We're a little late. <laughs> no. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Marilyn Maxwell? Um, is your name alliterative? Watch your language, please. <laughs> I don't think whether our guest went to school or not has got anything to do with it. <laughs> No, the I meant like yes. M, M for Marilyn Maxwell. It is alliterative? Yes. Have you appeared on radio? Uh, is there a comedian that has the same last name you have? What? Uh, you Doris Day? Yes! probably through you, panel, was the answer to the question, have you ever been on television? And Miss Doris said no, because this is literally her first TV appearance, and mm. we're real pleased about oh, it, nice. too. Uh, I got something else rather pleasant that I have the opportunity to do tonight. I don't think you remember it, Miss Doris, but it must be about four years ago, I stopped by a table in a restaurant here in New York and sat down for a little while, just about the time you were going out to Hollywood. At the little club? Yeah, no, it was Louis Armand, actually. You were sitting down with another girl, and I came and sat with you for a little while. I didn't expect you to remember it, though. But I do remember then that you had climbed up on the top of uh, your profession as a singer. Now you've gone out to Hollywood and knocked those pinnacles over. But I've got something here that makes it crystal clear you're still way up on top of the pinnacles on the singing department, because Columbia Records is presenting to Doris Day the one millionth recording of Secret Love. This is the gold record which now becomes your record. It's this, very thrilling, really. It's, it's a, a wonderful thing to have, and I'd give it to you to carry off, but I'm afraid you're not quite big enough a girl for I, this. I don't think I can make it. If you let me guard it until the show's over, I guarantee you deliver it to your hands. All right. Is that all right? That's fine. Fine, and thanks a lot. I've certainly enjoyed your picture, Young at Heart. More than that, we've enjoyed the honor of your first appearance on TV. Our thanks for being our guest and for almost stumping those characters over there. John, I haven't made Young at Heart yet. I'm going to make You're it. going to make Young and Hard. With Frank Sinatra. Oh, well, uh -huh. wonderful. You don't need a broken down baritone, do you? We could use you. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks for coming to see us. Would you say goodbye to the panel on the way out? Thank you. Nice to see you. And now, until next week, but with the preface, Miss Dorothy, it's wonderful to have you back home with us. This is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Thank you, John. It's wonderful to be back. Good night, Steve. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, boys. Good night, Arlene. Oh, those boys. <laughs> Good night, Bennett. Good night, John, and that secret love next to you there. <laughs> beautiful. Don't beautiful. we make a wonderful couple? Yeah, beautiful. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Life? This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network, Star's Day appears with the courtesy of Warner Brothers.